the Spirit of Christ. And I know if you're born again or not, because I can feel it. I can spot you a mile away. I can spot a Christian a mile away because we have kindred spirit. And I know he was being a Christian for his wife. He wasn't being a Christian because he wanted Christ in his life. He was being a Christian for his wife. So anyhow, we got a bunch of people out there, and it was freezing cold. I mean, it was, it was like a, a glacier. It was freezing cold. And uh, I, I baptized everybody, got them in, got them out, and got them on the shore. Because it was, and he put blankets around them. But I had to stay in that water. When I came to him last, I said, now, you're confessing Jesus, your personal Savior, right? He goes, yes. He goes, and, and, and you know what baptism is all about? about? The death of Christ and coming up in the new life in Christ. Do you understand that? He goes, yes. He did. So I grabbed him, and I put him under that water, and I kept him there. He opened his eyes under the water and was looking at me. It was clear water, too. And he was looking at me, and he was kind of kicking his feet a little bit. And I had him under in the water, turning up his nose, because I didn't have his nose plugged or nothing. The other people, I, you know, plug their nose. He might just grab like this and pull him under. And he looked at me, and I looked down at him. I said, I still don't believe you believe. I saw that really worried look in his face. And I pulled him back up off the water. And I told him, I said, you know, one day, one day, you're going to know who Jesus is. Uh, he never came back to the church. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something. It's I'm gonna tell you something. It's as serious as a heart attack. Serving God is as serious as a heart attack. We have taken the seriousness out of God. Oh yeah, we'll get to one day, Lord. Oh Lord, don't, don't worry about it. I'll take care of that later. Oh, don't worry about it, Lord. You know, I I'll get around to it, God. You know, pretty soon. That voice of God in your head that screams at you at the beginning, you know, then talks to you and then whispers to you and then you can no longer hear. That happens all the time. Because I'm going to tell you something. When God screams at you, you better listen. I was driving with Pastor Tim and uh, he lost his wallet. He left his wallet at house, right? So he, he's in his car and I'm with him and Chris is with this and he's, he, I mean, he's flying down the road. And I told him, I said, Pastor, <laughs> stop sign, stop at it completely, dead stop. He looked at me and go, I, I'm telling you right now, stop at this stop sign. So he does, he stops at the stop sign completely. I said, look there, he looks like the high patrolman sitting right there. I said, brother, you gotta be able to listen to God, and you'll save yourself a lot of trouble. Amen. If you listen to God, you'll save yourself a lot of trouble. And a lot of times we got to listen to save ourselves from a lot of trouble. Amen? Wisdom is something that God gives unto you liberally. Amen? If you ask for wisdom, he gives it to you. He doesn't hold nothing back. And he was changing a tire of a, of a Travis's para teacher. And he says, this, this, this lug nut is, is gonna is gonna break. I looked at the situation and said, uh, hey Travis, jack the tire off off the ground. So Travis takes two jacks of the tire, and oh, that nut came right off. Wisdom shows you what needs to be done. Amen? Amen. If, it, if I would have come out there, he would have broke that stud off that thing. Because see, the weight was bearing on it. Life, a lot of times, bears weight on us. Amen? Life bears weight on us. But Jesus says, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Lord, can, can, can you... Can you Pump that jack just twice <laughs> so I can get that load off me so I don't break. Amen? Amen. A lot of times, are we, we have not because we ask not. He's there to help us. He's not there to condemn us. He's not there to destroy us. He's there to help us. When we have need, Lord, help me. And as a great father, 
He never says no. Amen? God never says no to you when you're in that time of trouble and time of need. And we should see that by the Old Testament. Every time the children of Israel cried out, guess what happened? God came on board and rescued them out of their troubles. Amen? And he's the same God. He has not changed. When he spoke and all the world came into existence, he's the same God today as he was yesterday or a or, or million years or however many trillion years. Ago. I don't know. What? He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? And when my friend said, hey, he's going to a church. I said, what church is going to? Well, I don't know. I said, well, look for signs. He goes, what do you mean? I said, look for a sign that says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If that sign's in that church, you know it's a four squares church. <laughs> the next week he calls me and goes, well, I didn't notice, but they have a huge sign that says Jesus Christ yesterday, today, and forever. I said, yeah, that's a four square church. <laughs> The signs there. How many know God always gives us signs to know where we're at and what we're doing, how to do it? And when we're in time of trouble, He's a very help in the time of trouble. And I can tell you something right now: we need God because we're in trouble constantly. Amen. Amen. But He is the solver of all your problems. When man came to me and said, "Well, you know, I get my life straight now. I'm going to come to church faster. I'll never see you." You'll never get your life straightened out. Come to Jesus as you are with all your troubles, with all your problems, and he will show you the way out. Had one man came to me and said, he was on probation. He violated his probation. Even the probation officer said, you got to go to court, you're going to spend another five years in prison. He comes crying to me. Crying big dog. I said, okay. I'll pray. I'm going to tell you, God is going to say something to that judge, and that judge is going to forego it and give you one more chance. He, and he said, well, no. The prosecutor, my probation, everybody says I'm going to spend five years. I don't care what they say. I'm telling you that if you believe, God will talk to that judge and give you one more chance. So Monday he goes to court, and the judge says, I don't know why I'm doing this, and I shouldn't. Against my better judgment, I'm going to give you one more chance. He said, I fell down because he had to stand up to the judge. <laughs> he said, my, 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 my knees got shaky. I almost fell back on the chair because exactly what you said, exactly what that judge said. He said, and I know there's a God. I said, oh, good. I know you do. I'm happy that you know there's a God that will walk in this light. Because if you go back, you're going to serve that five years, and it's going to be a hard time for you. Jesus told that person, go and sin no more. In other words, I, I grant your request. Now, because of that, go and live righteousness in Christ. He goes on and says in the last verse, Owe no man anything. Amen? Don't be enslaved. What that means, don't be enslaved to men. Don't owe them to a place of enslavement. Amen? We, we owe money on houses. A lot of people owe money on cars. People owe money on different things. That's not enslavement. Amen? It's when you owe men that can come and throw you in jail and prison. Owe men that have control and power over you. That's when you got to be careful. Owe no man anything. But to love one another, for he that loveth another has fulfilled the law. Wow. Jesus did not make did, did not come to make life difficult for us. He came to ease our burden. He came to say, you know, if you love those who hate you, amen. If you love those who are not lovable, if you love those things that no one else can do, you show the love of God. Because how many know God loves the sinner? Willing that none should perish. None. Not one. But all come to that horrible word of uh, repentance. Amen? For some reason, that, that the word repentance got a really bad rap over the last 25 years. What that means is stop doing evil. 
turn and do good. Because God will forgive you all the evil. What was it? All the sin. I can call it evil, sin. I use both words. So don't get messed up in the translation. He forgives you for all the things you've done. All the evil. All the sins. And he forgives you and then says, now you're free. How many remember when you first got saved, it sounded like a, like a million tons came off you. Oh, hallelujah. When you first got to Jesus and all that horrible stuff in your life fell off. You went, oh, praise God. I feel 100 pounds lighter. Amen. That's what repentance does. It takes all those burdens from you. Cast all your cares upon him. But what? He careth for you. And in one word, love your one another as I have loved you and laid down my life for you. Most important thing. Amen? Amen. And Dad, why don't you come? We're going to close in prayer. I did preach 45 minutes. Amen. Man, let's sing that little chorus, God. It's so good. Let's sing with that by your head. Maybe you need to have a need this morning. You need special prayer. You need special prayer with a happy prayer. You great privilege for us to pray with you and pray for you. Whatever you have need of, make sure you have need.